Today's makeup look is inspired by a date night, Valentine's Day, whether it's a first date or a date with your husband, whom you've been married to for years and years, it's fun to get a little glammed up for date night. So I'm going for a little bit more of a darker eye and a nude lip to balance it out. Eventually you'll find a tutorial from me for like girls night and that will be a softer eye and a bolder lip. What I've found, at least with my husband Justin, softer more natural looking lips are more appealing than like this bright bold red or pink lip. So I thought I would save that for like a fun girls night tutorial. Um, anyway, if you want to see how I got this look, go ahead and keep watching. So the first step is applying the primer. I am trying the new CoverGirl True Blend Face Primer for Dry Skin. My skin has been uh, drier and more problematic than it has ever been. So I am trying a bunch of new products looking for the holy grail for whatever it is my skin needs. I have major redness around my nose and in through my eyebrows here, like the quintessential T-zone. And it's driving me crazy. Next, I'm applying Max Paint Pot in Soft Ochre to my eyelids. Normally, if you've watched my makeup tutorials before, you've heard me talk about Painterly, which is a little bit, slightly darker, perhaps a little bit closer to my skin tone. This is a little bit brighter, a little bit more on the yellow side but I've always wondered how it would look under the shadows I normally wear and if it would add a little like, essentially backlight to the shadows because it's a little brighter and it's fine it, it hasn't been a very profound difference but um, I was low on painterly anyway so I needed something new so I went with soft ochre so here it is in the container and then I like to dust a little bit of powder whatever's left over on a brush right over top of that because sometimes those MAC paint pots can be super sticky. So I'm going for a rich chocolate brown eye and I'm using the new CoverGirl Nudes True Naked palette. So this is a not subtle knock on the uh, Urban Decay Naked palette, but I'm excited to give it a shot. Typically what I've found in drugstore products, specifically eyeshadows, is they aren't quite as blendable um, as the professional or the high-end brands, but we'll give we'll give this a try. So I'm gonna stay in this end, probably do that on my base, and then a mixture of these in the crease and to add a little bit more depth to it. So now I'm picking up a lighter shade to soften the edges around where I just applied that base color. And now I'm going to mix these two together, not the absolute darkest, but the two next to it. Okay, next I'm using the Benefit Push-Up Liner. This can take a little getting used to when you use it, but it's great for a really dark, inky, bold, upper lash line liner. <laughs> um, many descriptive words. So, but it is like a gel formula in a little soft tip. So if you get it and you hate it, that's fine. Give it a good shot though. You know, give it a good week of practice. Next up is mascara. I'm using my Shu Umera Lash Curler and then the CoverGirl Plumpify Blast Pro Mascara. I grabbed this when I grabbed the primer yesterday and this just had so many claims on the box. I sometimes buy these mascaras just to try and be like, wow, they said it was going to do a lot and typically it doesn't. Now this brush is unlike any brush I've ever used before. It's enormous. Anyway, what I'm getting at is I tried a good swipe of this yesterday and I wasn't disappointed. You gotta build it. But man, it added a lot of definition to my lashes. Next up is foundation. This, the name of this is just perfect for a night out. It is the Laura Mercier Candle Glow Soft Luminous Foundation. I'm using the shade Cream. Doing two pumps on my 
hand and then if I need to add more I will. This is I've found to be medium buildable coverage and it's a luminous foundation so it won't give you that matte finish but it's not a natural foundation. So it doesn't cover blemishes well. I don't think it's really supposed to. Um, and I need to use concealer on that anyway. If you wanted a bit more of a fuller coverage from this foundation, I would just do another layer. Um, but if you think about you're on a date, this is a romantic look, maybe you just skip that because you don't want it to look like you're wearing a ton of makeup. You just want to look like yourself and that you've highlighted your best features. So for concealing blemishes, I'm using Makeup Forever's Full Cover Concealer in the shade 1. I put a little bit of it on the back of my hand and I'm using a concealer brush by Tarte to cover blemishes. Really, really dark ones, which I'm battling right now. I like to layer a bit of concealer on there and go around and finish the rest of my face with dotting concealer and then come back and actually blend the product in. I found that letting it sit there for a second helps it blend a little bit better and you don't just wipe it away if you start working on it. So the blemishes are concealed. I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Concealer in R20 for under my eyes. This is not as full of coverage for me as the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer. They're from the same brand. This is intended to brighten your under eyes a little bit and I have found that I, it has done that. Um, it's also a bit lighter than the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer in shade one, which is the lightest shade. So I'll spread it out and then use my fingers to just kind of warm up the product and blend it in. And because this doesn't cover as well as the Makeup Forever Full Cover Concealer for me, I like to go pretty heavy with it and let it sit there and then set it with the translucent setting powder. So under eyes are concealed. Let's do eyebrows. Using, as always, the Hourglass Arch Brow Pencil in Platinum Blonde. For a little bit of setting powder, I'm using the It Cosmetics CC Plus Airbrush Perfecting Powder. It is a sheer to full coverage, and I'm using a big fluffy Sonia Kashuk brush. I've used this a couple times recently, just in, not in a tutorial, but just as a setting powder, and I haven't yet used it alone to see what kind of full coverage I can get. But I was low on my MAC Studio Fix powder foundation. So I thought, let's try something else. I actually went to get the It Cosmetics, I think there's a product called Bye Bye Pores or Pores No More um, setting powder, but they were sold out. So I thought, we'll give this one a shot. Going on to my face. So now I'm using the Tartist Contour Palette. I've done a full tutorial using this one. And I'm going to go a bit more dramatic than I normally do on the contour, just, you know spice things up a little bit. So I'm picking this shade here and then we'll highlight with a combination of those three and I'm going to use a different blush. Um, so I'm using the Sonia Kashuk number 24 and I'm going to go right in the hollow of my cheek here. And it's easier for me to just layer, layer, layer until I get the depth I want instead of going for it right out of the gate. Now this is a rounder brush than you may see typically see in contour tutorials and I find that I like the final look using a rounder brush. I'm not getting quite as strong of an angle but I don't want that. I'm looking for more depth and like soft shadowing not necessarily like chiseled cheek. Um, if you want something more defined use a tighter flatter brush. So with a Tarte Holiday Collection fluffy brush I'm picking up one, two, and then the lighter illuminator right in the center and sort of just mixing them all together. I'm going to dust this on the tops of my cheeks and go up 
toward my temple. This is a very subtle highlighter, in my opinion. I don't like to glimmer like Edward Cullen. I know some of you do, and that's cool. It's just not for me. I'm using the Hourglass Blush in Luminous Flush. This is like kind of a forgotten about blush that I loved. I've been using that blush that came in the Tarte Contour Palette for so long. Um, but in cleaning out my makeup, I came across this and thought, why isn't that empty yet? <laughs> I should be using that every day. I'm just dotting this on the apples, spreading it out a little bit. <sighs> there, I lost a hair. Okay. <sighs> oh! Wow, that's unusual for Sonia Kashuk brushes. What's the deal? Okay, so the face is contoured, warmed up with a bit of color. Now I'm grabbing an angled eyeshadow brush. This is from Julep. It must have come in one of the boxes that I used to get from them. They're most known as a nail polish subscription company. Um, I'm gonna go back to the CoverGirl True Naked palette and pick this shade that I did on the base of my eyelid to go on my lower lash line. I don't want a lot of darkness or like a strong line under there. I just want some depth, almost creating a shadow like you were contouring, essentially. So I'm going pretty much the length of my eye, just not in all the way to the corner. Then I will pick up the shade I did use in the crease. Not the shiny one, the one right next to it, and I'm just going to press that along my lash line. No closer than the eye, what is that, the iris. I'm not going any closer toward the inner corner than where my iris, right, starts the colored part of my eye. I'm cleaning that brush off and picking up this really bright shadow on the end. And that will be inner corner to soften that line, give it sort of a finale, if you will, and also add a nice brightness. For lower lashes, I'm using the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. I intended to buy black, but I accidentally bought black brown so I found that I've needed to layer this quite a bit more than I usually do when this runs out I will get black again it's a little bit easier to work with I've got a rogue hair and you don't need to layer it quite as much and this stuff dries fast so you gotta move quickly with it the final part before lipstick is using the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eyeliner in Mushroom, and I'm gonna line my inner waterline with this. So you can totally skip this part. I like the definition it adds, and it doesn't, sometimes using a really dark liner on your inner waterline, upper and lower, um, can sort of bring your eyes in a little bit. So it's good if you're doing a big smoky eye, because you can afford to sort of make your eyes look smaller because you've spent time making them look big and smoky. Um, but this isn't super intense of an eye, so I didn't want anything too dark. So I'm going for this mushroom shade. So the eyes and face are finished. I am grabbing Lipstick Queen's Hang 10 lipstick. This is a totally nude lipstick. Good if you're going a little bit darker on the eyes. However, if this is too nude for you, or you have a nude lipstick you like but you want a little bit more color, I'll show you how to layer a brighter gloss over top of it, and then I'll punch up the color a little bit without it looking like this bold, bright lipstick. So there's the look with just the lipstick, and if you want to add a bit of gloss, this is an old Jiwei um, gloss in, I think it's called Birchbox Pink. My sticker has bent over. Um, and I got this in an old, yep, Birchbox Pink. I got it in a very old Birchbox. Um, this is a really bright pink, but it goes on sheer. So I'm just going to dot this on my lips. And that adds just a touch more pink. So any 
sheer-ish pink lip gloss you have, you can layer over top of a nude lipstick, and then I'll add a slight punch of color. So I would love to see your date night makeup looks. If you post a picture on Instagram or Twitter, use hashtag smallthingsbeauty so I can come take a look.